hosted by the amazing Creative Hive. I'm so honored to be a part of this brilliantly resourceful idea to help us, the community, stay connected by sharing inspiring stories, tools, ideas, support, love, and even laughter during this really challenging time for all of us. It's really important to stay positive and think about all that is good right now instead of all that is not. You know, this situation we're in reminds me so much of being an athlete and when I got injured. It was all about turning the downtime into an opportunity. We can do things that we wouldn't normally do, like learn something new. And when I was skating, I learned how to juggle to help my skating or work on something. So I worked on visualizing perfect performances or discover something. And I discovered that I was made to be a champion. And so are you. So let's make the best of this time. And I'm actually really giggling today because it's the first day since March 12th that I've gotten out of my pajamas and I did my hair. So thank you for having me do this, Des and Mike. Good job. All right. I am super excited to be able to give you a mini dream building workshop today. But before we get started, I want you to make sure that you have some paper and something to write with so that you can take notes. You're definitely going to want to do that. Now, this time is for you. So I encourage you to be open-minded here with me today and have a willingness to play along. And just do your best to let go of all the outside distractions, the fears, and the conditions around us. And if you have any questions during this session, please write them in the comment box below and I will answer them at the end. Sound good? Awesome. Now, my intention is that you leave this session knowing three tools that can help you achieve your goals and dreams. Today, we're going to be learning about the language of success. Yes, there is a language, or you can call it a pattern, a system, or a way of doing things that creates the results that you want. And once you understand what that language is, you can apply it to any area of, the light of your life that you want to improve. My question to you is, have you ever achieved a goal or a dream in your life, but when you first had that goal, you didn't know how you were going to achieve it? So I know I have, and this proves a point for all of us, that we are capable of far more than we even know. And what I've learned during the many opportunities I've had speaking to different groups is that often our dreams and our goals are born out of the challenges we are facing or the pain that we're currently experiencing. So besides the challenges of today's conditions, are you currently experiencing a challenge in some area of your life, maybe in your career or in a relationship, in your health or the amount of money that you have? We live in a universe that speaks to us through two gross signals, our longings and our discontents. The feeling of longing for something that we haven't yet created and the feeling of discontentment with our current circumstances are what spark us to grow. So you can be pushed by pain or you can be pulled by a vision. These two energies, the pain of your problem and the burning desire for what you truly want are essential for creating new results. Now, I want to tell you a personal story about a time in my life when pain pushed me to make a change. And it was about three years ago, I was waking up most days feeling very irritable, agitated, and actually the word I used was pissy. <laughs> and I kept asking my husband, what's wrong with me? I don't get this. I have everything I have ever dreamed of, and some. I have a family, we're all healthy, I've accomplished my dream, we have gone on some really incredible vacations and created great memories. From the outside looking in, my life looked perfect, but something was happening. And I, I cried a lot. And I was very, very confused. I didn't understand. I felt completely lost and I had a really hard time feeling grateful for anything. Can any of you relate to feeling that way? 
My whole life I have always searched out help when I'm struggling and I remembered meeting a life coach at a retreat three years prior to that. So I reached out to her and I was really embarrassed and ashamed <laughs> to share my problems with her. Uh, what I quickly realized was that I had stopped dreaming. I didn't have any goals. I wasn't challenging myself. I didn't have a vision of what this next chapter looked like for me. I was living my life by default instead of design. And there was a part of me that was really nervous to step outside my comfort zone again and discover what it was that I really wanted to do. I had all kinds of thoughts of why I didn't need to do this and why it wasn't convenient. But there was also another part of me that was super excited about the potential opportunities that would come from this experience with her. And I also knew that great things occur on the other side of comfortable. Have you ever been scared to take a big leap or make a change? I bet you have. So I decided to let the part of me that wanted to discover what it was that I truly wanted for my life win over the fear I had and I signed up. And when I was first working with my coach, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do for a career, not at all. But what I did know was that I was really passionate about helping people. So that's all I wrote down in the beginning, help people. Two weeks later, I was at a vision workshop and had a massive realization that that is exactly what I would love, to help people in a big way by sharing my life stories and experiences and the tools I used for success with all of these people. I am now living out my second dream as a motivational coach and speaker. I have incredibly meaningful relationships. My health is better than it's ever been. And I get to help awesome people like you discover a life they would love living. And I know for a fact that I would not be where I am today without the support and the coaching that I have had over the years. I can honestly say I am grateful every single day. Now, what's your next big dream? Imagine how you would feel when your dream becomes a reality. Let's expand your awareness together by studying what I call the results formula. Okay, and it, it starts like this. Your thoughts cause your feelings. And you know this because when you think joyful thoughts, oh, like, like we can go out now, <laughs> you feel happy. When you think about something scary or stressful, your heart starts to beat faster or you maybe even get hot. Your thoughts literally affect your physiology. Next, your feelings cause your actions. So by law, our feelings must be expressed into our actions. When you feel confident and when you feel energized, you take different action than when you feel depressed, sad, or frustrated. Make sense? And your actions cause your results. It's your actions or the lack of your actions that create your results. Again, so your thoughts cause your feelings, your feelings cause your actions, and your actions cause your results. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the law of cause and effect. Yet most people don't get this. They look at their circumstances and their conditions and they call them their causes. Actually, they call them their be causes. For example, I can't start a new job because I'm too old or I won't get my benefits. I can't find the love of my life because I'm not pretty enough or I'm not thin enough. I can't because, because, because. The true cause of our results is right here. Our results are caused by what we have been thinking. That's the first cause. And if you wanna know what you've been thinking, look at your results because our results never lie. And this brings me to the first secret of dream building, designing a dream. What do you really want? What would you love for your life? Okay, I want you to write this down. Clarity is power. Without a clearly defined blueprint, you cannot build your dream, just like we must have a clear blueprint if we wanna build a house. The same is true for our dream. So when you become clear on what it is that you really want in life, you will begin to see opportunities, circumstances, and even resources that you would have otherwise missed. 
So now what I want to do is let's learn how to design the blueprint for your dream and let's make it crystal clear. There are four major domains of your life. So write this down again. There's health, relationships, I'll go slower, <laughs> career or vocation, and time and money freedom. Again, health, relationships, career, vocation, and time and money freedom. Now we all experience results in each of these areas of our lives. And if we were in the room together right now, um, we would be doing this exercise live, but for now, I just want you to take notes on how to do this exercise and then you can do the work on it after we're done, okay? So when you're doing this, I invite you to give yourself permission to imagine like you did when you were a kid, okay? Where nothing was impossible. No dream was too big. When we were kids, we had a rich imagination. We put on all kinds of possible futures. We imagined being a ballerina, a rock star, a movie star, an Olympic champion, a Stanley Cup champion, or anything that you wanted. Then, I'm gonna unlock your imagination with this simple question. Write this down too. What would I love? Ask yourself, what would I love in these areas of my life? You will receive very different answers when you ask, what would I love compared to what do I think I can do? What does the economy say I can do? What does my current situation say I can do? And what are other people gonna say or think I should do? Howard Thurman, Dr. Martin Luther King's mentor said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go do that. Because what this world needs is more people who come alive. So right now, and when you're doing this work, really lean into that question. What would I love in these areas of my life? And then I want you to imagine that you're gonna go into what we call a time machine and you're gonna travel three years into the future and three years from now, everything you wanted has completely worked out. Okay, so now I want you to write on your paper, I am so happy and grateful now that, write that statement across the top of your page. And when we are finished, you can write down what you would love in all four areas of your life, starting with that statement, okay? I am so happy and grateful now that, and I encourage you, strongly encourage you to suspend any urge to figure out how this result is going to happen right now, okay? This is simply what would you love, as if I'm giving you a magic wand and you could create anything or exactly what you want. So dream big, okay? I want you to have fun with this. This exercise can really, really light you up. All right, now we're on to dream building principle number two, deciding for your dream. You must make a firm decision for what it is that you want before you will bring your dream into reality, before you will make it happen. Napoleon Hill, author of the book Think and Grow Rich, after studying 25,000 men and women, he concluded that highly successful people form the habit of making decisions quickly and changing them seldomly, if ever, while unsuccessful people made decisions slowly and change them frequently. It's the decisions we are willing to make that shape our lives. But once you make a firm decision, even in the absence of perfect conditions, a whole manner of things will begin to occur for you. There's an old funny story about a man who goes to the bank to cash a check. He goes up to the teller and he asks, can you cash this check? And the teller looks at the check and says, of course I can, I can cash that check for you. Just need you to sign your name on the back of it and I'll give you your money. The guy says, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. I don't wanna sign my name on the back and then I hand it over to you. You're holding on to my check with my name on it and you might decide not to give me my money. And the banker says, well, sir, you have to sign your name on the back of the check before I can give you the money. The man says, well, I just don't feel comfortable with that. 
<laughs> so the banker says, no, I assure you, I will give you the money if you sign your name on the back of the check. He says, well, could you please just this one time give me the money and then I promise that I will sign my name on the back of the check. So finally, the young teller says, you know, I can't help you. You're gonna have to leave. All right, so the man goes to the next bank. He goes through the same routine. Again, he's refused service. So he goes to the third bank and he's having the same conversation with another young teller explaining he feels uncomfortable. He doesn't wanna sign his name on the back of the check. He's told that it's banking policy and that he needs to sign his name on the back of the check. Finally, this young teller has just had it with this, this guy and he reaches under the counter, pulls out a rubber baseball bat, reaches across the counter and whacks the guy in the head and says, sign the darn check. So the man signs the check and he gets his money. With the money in hand, the man goes back to the first bank and goes up to that first teller and says, hey, look, down the street, I got my money. The teller says, yeah, but I bet even down the street, you had to sign your name to that check first. The guy says, well, yeah, I did. But you see, no one ever explained it to me the way they did. And I love that story because I believe that on so many levels, it's my story and it's your story. That we go to the teller of life, we go to our imagination, we go to our dream and our goal of our business. And we say, I really want my business to look like this. I want my income to look like this. I want my relationships to look like this and be like this. I want my health to look like this and be like this. And we describe it. We're good at that. Then life says, great. Well, then you go ahead and sign your name to it first. You become the thing you say you want and I will cash that check for you. Oh, and then we back up and say, no, 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 no. Give me the resources first. In other words, when the economy is good, when I have enough business sense, when I have the money, when I have the time, when I have the relationship, when I've got the confidence, when things around me change first, then I will sign my name to it. Then I will commit to the thing I say I want. We must be willing and have the courage to sign our name to the thing we want and take action in the absence of knowing all the steps if we want to have our dream. When I was working towards my Olympic dream, I had no idea how I was gonna do it. Not a clue. I had all kinds of undesirable conditions. Divorced parents, my mom suffered from depression and cried herself to sleep many nights. Um, we didn't have a lot of money and I was bullied regularly. But I decided that I wasn't gonna let anything get in my way. And it didn't matter what I was faced with. I was just adamant that I was gonna keep deciding for my dream time and time and time again. So you're gonna create a blueprint for your dream today. Then you will decide for your dream. And now we're gonna talk about principle number three, befriending your fears. So it was Napoleon Hill that said, the value of your decisions depends upon the courage you have to make them. Great dream building requires the ability to spend, suspend knowing how and taking action in the absence of all the answers. When we decide for a dream, there's a part of us that says yes. And then there's a part of us that says, that rises up and says, yeah, right. That's not going to happen. Or that voice might say, well, how are you going to do that? You've never done that before. Who do you think you are? You don't have what it takes. <laughs> how many times has that voice spoken to you in your life? What is that voice? So that is the voice of fear. And it's the part of you that wants things to stay status quo, okay? And it often will disguise itself as practicality. Fear isn't gonna say, hey, I'm here to kill your dreams. It's too smart for that. It's gonna say, I'm here to keep you safe. I'm here to make sure you never have to experience that level of pain again. And I'm here to make sure that your kids are taken care of. 
I'm here to make sure that you don't get embarrassed. It's the voice that says, now's not a good time, wait until later. <laughs> oh my gosh, if I could count how many times I've heard that, I hear it often. It's the voice that says, you don't have the money for that. That is irresponsible. It's the voice that says, you don't have the experience or the credentials. Who are you to have this dream? And it's the part of you that asks, what if you fail? So what if you fail? Have you ever had failure in your life? I know I have many, many times. And we all have actually in the very beginning when we were babies. We all started out as non walkers. We grabbed the coffee table or couch and we pulled ourselves up and we tried to take a step, but we fell down. And we got up and we took another step or maybe even two and we fell down again. Never once when we were learning to walk did we say to ourselves, well, that's it. I guess walking isn't for me. No, we got up and we kept going. And something happens to us when we become adults. We stop giving ourselves permission to fall down. We fall down in business and we say, well, I guess I'm not meant to be a business owner. If we fall down in love, we say, oh, I guess love isn't in the cards for me. When falling down and rising up are actually the keys to achieving your dreams. We've got to befriend our fears and give ourselves permission to fail enough to succeed. And there are so many great dream builders that do this. They fail and then they try and they try again. Here are some examples. Oprah Winfrey was fired by television executives and told that she was not fit for television, but she got up and she kept going. Steven Spielberg was rejected from the USC film school three times, but he rose up and kept going. J.K. Rowling was unemployed, divorced, raising a daughter, and her first Harry Potter novel was rejected by 12 publishing houses. But she got up and she kept going. Bruce Springsteen, one of my favorite singers, was fired from his first band and told by his manager that he couldn't sing. But he kept going. Henry Ford, another one, was a failure at three businesses before starting Ford Motor Company at the age of 53. And he was a success because he got up and he kept going. Fear and failure are prerequisites for achieving great dreams. So when that voice of doubt questions you and asks, what if you fail? Let your response be, bring it on. I might fail. And if I do, I will rise up, I will keep going, and I will succeed. The question is, how do we give power to the part of us that wants to move forward when we keep hearing the voice that wants us to play small or stay comfortable? Oh, and by the way, comfort is the enemy of progress. I love that one. So there's a process um, to this that I take my clients through in my program, but for our purposes today, I'm going to give you one thing you can do. It's powerful. We know that where our attention goes, energy flows, right? So when you notice that your thoughts are going towards limitation, you got to interrupt that thought, okay? Refocus your mind on your goals or your vision, your dream, whatever you want to call it, and take an action step, okay? This action is key because it tells your subconscious mind that you are serious about your new result. And over time, that old stinking para paradigm um, will actually begin to dissolve away, it'll go away. So once you have written out your vision, take a look at it and ask yourself, what is one action step that I can take that will move me in the direction of my vision? Don't let yourself off the hook here. There is absolutely some action step that you can take. So what is that action step for you? Okay, make sure that you write it down and then put a date 
by when you are going to take that action. This is important. Progress is more important than perfection. It doesn't exist. So taking even the smallest steps towards your dream will make a big difference. The key is to do what you can with what you have from where you are today. The choices that we make and the actions that we take today are ultimately who we become tomorrow. So those are just three steps to my program and I really hope they were helpful to you. Okay, we're gonna do um, a quick recap of what I have covered. You have learned principle number one, designing your dream. You must have a blueprint of what you want in order to achieve it. And the clearer, more precise blueprint that you have, the more power you have and the more power you give it. You learn principle number two, the power of decision, that you must decide for the thing you want in the absence of knowing how, okay? And the last one, principle number three, befriending your fear and how fear and failure are prerequisites for greatness. And we must befriend our fear and shift our paradigms if we are to achieve our dreams. I know that you have a splendid dream. You need to get it on paper today. Start today. I want you to feel it and then decide for it every single day when it's not convenient, when it's not comfortable, and when you don't feel like it. I want you to know and believe that what is inside of you is far greater than any challenges you will ever face. And I know it feels impossible right now with our current circumstances, but trust that power within you and just go for it. Why not? You're living. See what happens. All right. Well, it has been an honor and a privilege to spend time with you today. And I just want to offer that if you would love to take this work further with me, that you can please connect with me on either Facebook, which is Jamie Soleil. Instagram is Jamie Soleil Life Coach. Or you can email me at hello at jamiesoleil.com. And I believe it is all in the descriptions of this post. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to be sent some questions and I'm going to answer them. There we go. Just getting on my computer here. Okay. Wow. We have no questions. So you know what, everybody, I wish you all the best in this unprecedented time. Um, again, make the best of your time and uh, stay positive. We're all going to get through this stronger. I really believe that. I know it's uncomfortable, um, but start your day with gratitude. Be grateful for everything we have. We live in an amazing country here in Canada and um, we're just great people. <laughs> okay, so connect with your community, support local when we can, and let's hold each other up.